Rule of 12 chipping. What is the rule of 12? The rule of 12 is a system by Paul Runyon whereby you work out your carry versus rollout distance on a chip. Why do we do that? Because chips are meant to roll out to the hole, which means we have to take into account break and all sorts of things. Why do we do that? It's the most simple way of getting a reliable chip strike. Instead of using a sand wedge all the time, having to fly at different distances, it makes it less complicated and allows you margin for error so that if you miss strike something, at least it still rolls instead of fatting a sand wedge or thinning it across the green, which is very easy to do, especially on tighter surfaces. What is the rule of 12? Why is it called that? Well, we take the number 12. Don't worry about why. We take the number 12, we work out the carry distance of your selected club versus the rollout distance. So there's a bit of a formula. So if you want to work out which club to use, you work out, number one, where your spot is on the green. So we go one, two, three. This is the spot that B-Dog wants to hit the ball. Now, the corresponding rollout to that three yards, okay? Remember three. Now we've got to go to the hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he's got to land at three yards, it's going to roll out nine. Nine and three, divided by three, three. Number 12 minus three equals nine. So he's going to hit the nine iron to land at that glove and it's going to roll out somewhere to the hole. Let's see if it works. So that landed about three and it's going to roll out Look at that, just over three, and it rolled out just past nine yards after landing. Pretty good ratio. If you can get it exactly at the glove, we're going to see something beautiful here. That's just past again, but a bit higher flight, so it should go just past the cup. Beautiful. So we've picked the right club. Go again. Okay, a little long, so we should go about a yard or, or two past the cup. Perfect. Now, let's try, let's show you something else, okay? Let's show you... If he doesn't like that spot, maybe he likes a longer spot. Let's say halfway, okay? What are we gonna do if he wants to go halfway? So that means we had 12 yards. So we wanna fly six and roll out six. That's one to one. 12 minus one is 11. What's 11? Pitching wedge is 10, sand wedge is 11. That's his sand wedge. He's gonna try land it at the glove and let's see if it has a one to one roll out ratio. Okay, it was just a little bit short and rolled out just a little bit short. So it works, but I do not advise this shot. Why? Because the different variations of spin and strike on a higher lofted club is much less reliable than a nine iron bumped on the front. You'll get better results with a nine over a long period of time than the sand wedge. But let's try something different, okay? Let's go for a longer hole, something that requires even lower loft. Let's, show, let's see if it works. Now let's show this in action. We've got a much longer chip. This is the best case scenario when you're missing a green. Leave yourself tons of green to get the ball rolling instead of short siding yourself with no green. How do we see this in action now? How long is this pitch? I don't know, let's pace it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We've paced out about 19, 20 yards. You tell me, where would you like to pitch this ball with a runner? You just tell me, don't worry about anything, don't, not what I expect you to say, anywhere you like it. You like it there, right? Yeah. So the way we can do that is go one, two, three, four, five. He wants to land it five yards onto the green and roll out 15 yards, five to 15. So it's one to three. So it's, it's land five, roll out 15. So we go five into 15, three. 15 divided by five is three, correct? Correct. Thank you for the checking. Got that. 12 minus three is oh. nine. So let's hit the nine iron. And I want you to hit it from there and pitch it in line with that glove. Let's see if it rolls out. And then I'm gonna tell you something important you have to remember when doing this, because it can change. Nobody talks about this part, but I will let you know after this shot, or a couple of these shots. So let's see the nine iron, how it runs out for you, okay? You wanna land it about here, and then it's gonna roll out, okay? So while it's the same club as the shorter one, okay, while it's the same club as the shorter shot, the landing spot is further onto the green, which allows for more rollout, because it's a, a firmer strike.
Okay, that's perfect, that's perfect, okay? What I wanted to show you, which is what I thought might happen, this is green speed dependent, and a lot of people will not talk about this when it comes to rule of 12. Yes, it's a very simple way to work out which club to hit, but you have to then say, what green speed is that made for? I would say it's probably made for like a, a 9.5 green speed, something like that. So if you're playing something more like an 8 or an 8.5, it might need to be the rule of 10 or the rule of 11, okay? So you start there. Because if we use this on this, on this practice green, it says 9.9. I can tell immediately that that would be the incorrect club because that landing spot, if he hits it there, this is the maximum it can ever roll out. So we're still going to leave ourselves 15, 16 feet to the hole. So what we need to do on a slower green is just take a little bit more club. So what I would suggest on a slower green, every stimp meter number down, hole number down, you want to just bring that rule of 12 down to rule of 11, rule of 10. So on a 10 stimp green, rule of 12. 9 stimp green, rule of 11. 8 stimp green, rule of 10. So let's try a 7 iron with the same landing spot. This is green speed dependent. This is what a lot of people are not talking about when they're doing this rule of 12. It's very simple, but it can get complicated if you're not playing on the same green speed as the person telling you about it. And that's what I wanted to tell you today, which is not talked about. So give me the 7 iron at the same landing spot. Focus on that landing spot. Get the feel for how much you, should, you need to hit the ball to that landing spot. Look at the landing spot. Love it. Now let's see if you can do that. He never chips with seven irons, so it may be difficult. Okay, he did it there. Watch that roll out. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now he's going a foot or two past the cup. It's all about the line now. Remember, when you're chipping like this along the ground, we take into account line, just like a putter. So if he's landing it here, and it's rolling out and stop bouncing here. This is as if he's standing here and putting the ball. If you were standing here, where would you put that ball to? Left. How much left? Two or three feet. So send the chip out about two or three feet. Because you have to take into account the, the break as well, players. Look at that. Absolute money. Absolute money. Look at this. Now he's left himself a little two-footer. We take the seven iron here because the green speed is slow. Find out your green speeds. Green speed, stimp 10, rule of 12. Stimp 9, rule of 11. Stimp 8, rule of 10. 5 to 15 yards is one part carry, three parts roll. 10 minus 3 is 7. Now remember that break. You hit a perfect second one. There we go. Look at this money. Now that's going to roll past a little bit because... Oh, maybe not. Just a little bit beyond his mark. But do you see the margin for error? One of the ones he lands here, it's next to the cup. The other one, he has a different strike, it lands here. Your body will auto-correct. Your strike will auto-correct, I promise. So this is the beginning of learning how to use carry versus rollout. The adjustments we use so far is for the green speed. The second adjustment I want to know, let you know about is uphill, downhill, same thing. Judge the slope, how far uphill and how far downhill are you, and change that rule of 12 to rule of 10, rule of 11, rule of 9 even. So this is a pretty flat chip, so rule of 10 is perfect because of the green speed. If it were uphill, we're on rule of 10, remember, because of the green speed. So it's rule of 10, because the speed is about 8. Now we're uphill, we can go rule of 9. Instead of going 10 minus 3 is 7, we'd go 9 minus 3 is 6. So we'd actually hit a 6 iron on an uphill chip of the same distance. It gets a bit complicated because no one's talking about this part. You can learn the rule of 12 as much as you want, but if your green speed is not the same as the instructor and you're hitting uphill and downhill chips, it's not going to be the same. You have to factor these things in. So learn the first part on a flat chip. See what your green speeds are like. Change your rule of 12, 11, or 10. Then when you're uphill and downhill, change that. Uphill chip, rule of 9, rule of 8. Downhill, rule of 11, rule of 12, Rule of 13, if it's severe downslope. That way, you're going to be able to make better chips, better decisions on which club to hit. He likes to hit a sand wedge around the green a lot of the time. But what I'm seeing here is with this little formula, this man is a freaking machine. For me, for everybody, lower loft, running sooner is going to work a majority of the time. If it doesn't, no problem. Do it your way. Get started with this. Maybe it changes your game. Wakanda forever. <laughs> What do you think though, honestly? Uh, lower loft, so the lob wedge is going to be more inconsistent over the long run. I think I'm good with it just because it's the main club that I've practiced. But 
I think a running club, it's also the reason why the older you get generally, the more hole in ones you get because the ball runs as opposed to a big lofty bite ball, your surface area that you're covering on the green is a lot, sh lot less. So with my pitch, with my nine, if I can get it going and I can, I can generally read the greens all right, um, it's going to be better. I agree with that. I think so. I mean, just to, to watch a ball roll and actually have a chance of going in instead of knowing it's going to be short, in your mind, it can make a very big difference because you actually feel like you have a chance of making stuff. When you're hitting stuff that's landing soft and poofies to the right because you're a bit worried about the spin or how the ball's going to react, it's, it does affect you mentally. To watch a ball roll up and go, wow, it's got a chance or Ooh, just missed the cup, it gives you a little boost of confidence because I like to see chips go past. Too many of us leave the chip short to allow a two or three foot putt. Go two or three foot past the cup, at least you'll have a chance of going in the hole. But for that, you need to get the ball rolling. And after some experience doing this, you're going to pick the right club, you're going to pick the right spot, and you're going to make more chips, more up and downs. Save 10 shots around. What a life.